this is IBM Museum. So recently I've seen an old story crop up again on a Facebook group. And I'll go through and pull up the, the text of the of the this IBM announcement. And it's been doubted that this thing is um, real the way that it reads. Um, you know, whether people just, some people don't believe it's authentic for the timing of, of when it was released. Um, but it was publicly repeated in the January and February edition of the Washington Monthly. And this is a, a later archive copy of that time frame. So it, it was out there and was found in the public, um, at least at the start of, of 1990. And the, this is the actual text. And I've, I've seen an uh, example that it looks like the original IBM announcement was actually from even mid-February of um, 1989. And you have to remember that the IBM PS2s were released in April of 1987. And that was, uh, I mean, at least on the PC side, the instance of the PS2 mouse being included with the system and you know and being available and, and coming into usage by computer users out there. But um, I'll go through let me let me go through and pull up the interaction window so I can kind of read through it as well and hopefully I won't have to put on any glasses or anything like that. I can probably scroll through this. But the abstract was mouse balls available as FRU. And that normally in IBM speak, that means field replaceable unit. IBM had that nomenclature that if you needed something, the field technicians needed a part, the, the minimum piece that could be replaced on a unit, and often that was an individual item, they called that the, an FRU. And that's somewhat synonymous with the part number, although in in some instances the the FRU and the part number can be different, um, just depending on the occasion. And those FRUs do have a particular format for how they're marked, and it's typically two leading digits, a character that can be a letter, and later on typically is a letter. In the PC line, it could sometimes be a number as well. And then four numbers following that. And so this is just a notification that's supposed to be, have gone out to um, IBM field engineers as a way to have a availability of, or they're notified of availability that they could get the mouse balls you know, uh, of the PS2 mice, they could order them and they could order the the clip that retained that mouse ball. And also this is a notification dealing with the cleaning aspect of the of the mouse ball and, and the mouse in general. And so it reads, of course, as you see here, mouse balls are now available as FRU. Therefore, if a mouse fails to operate, or should it perform erratically, it may need a ball replacement. And another aside, um, drifting off the text, I mean, youngsters today don't know the struggle. Optical mice <laughs> are um, a world better from what we, what we put up with when the initial mice came out and going through and having to clean that mechanical assembly is unknown. And so the the joke is a little bit dated as well, that a, a modern person thinks a, 
a mouse attached to the computer, <laughs> why do I have to clean a ball? But it was uh, just that that joke was based on it's, you know, a mouse ball. Um, because of the delicate nature of this procedure, replacement of mouse balls should only be attempted by properly trained personnel. And you'll get to see, I think it's, it's just a little bit of artistic license, as it were, for somebody drafting up this message in a way we can get into uh, uh, the truthfulness or, or not. Um, cleaning the, the mouse ball, really, um, it didn't necessarily have to be properly trained personnel. I'll go over a little bit of the training and, and we can look at um, some of the... Uh, the aspects to that cleaning. Before proceeding, determine the type of mouse balls by examining the underside of the mouse. And that's that sentence is, is strongly artistic license because it, in the first place it used plural, it says mouse balls, and, um, and the underside of the mouse. And the technician would know that Yes, for cleaning the the mouse, he would turn over the mouse and look at the underside of it. So I don't know. That seems a little strange. And then it's domestic balls will be larger and harder than foreign balls. And I'll get into that aspect a little bit in examining the mice themselves. Um, ball removal procedures differ depending upon manufacturer of the mouse. Foreign balls can be replaced by using the pop-off method. Domestic balls are replaced using the twist-off method. And I'll show a little bit of that as we go through and examine the mice as well. Um, um, mouse balls are not usually static sensitive. And yeah, they could probably retain a little bit of static for the nature of what they are, but I don't think you're going through and rubbing that rubber ball on, on your hair or something else for it to pick up a static charge normally. Um, so that again is probably a little bit of artistic license uh, for whoever wrote this. However, excessive handling can result in sudden discharge Upon completion of ball replacement, the mouse may be used immediately. And that sudden discharge, yeah, it's there. Having fun with the innuendos, um, I think. It is recommended that each replacer have a pair of spare balls for maintaining optimal customer satisfaction and that any customer missing his ball should suspect local personnel of removing these necessary items. Um, and again, it's a pair of spare balls. That um, that structure just sounds a little bit um, out of place. The have spares, why only have a pair of, of mouth balls? Why only have two um, rather than more or less? And for the nature of what we'll see when we look at the the the, um, the mice themselves, those you, you'd have replacements for each type as well. Um, so, yeah, with the innuendos and everything else, that just it's a little far fetched. Now, uh, and then blaming you know the customer blaming. Um, local personnel removing these necessary items. Well, you know, I don't know. Like, again, they're, they're having fun that someone is taking those. And even though it was kind of a joker game back in the day to pull the mouse ball out and you could have a coworker that their mouse would be, wouldn't operate uh, correctly with that um, missing. So, I mean, you can blame the coworkers or whatever for it missing. And to reorder, specify one of the following, and they have a part number listed there, and you see that kind of FRU format or part number format, the two digits, the, the character 
single character and then four following digit, digits. And they have that part number 33F8462 um, for domestic balls and then one number lower for the foreign mouse balls. And that has an aspect, we'll, we'll touch on that. But as I say, I've got the, the text and it looks like it is even optical character recognition because it is capitalized. They go through for the PS2 or some of the slashes in there. Um, the optical character recognition misreads that. Um, there's this, it's bunched together without um, spaces in some areas between the P slash N for part number and that the part number itself is that space is missing. Um, in the case of that 8462, the, the for, first part number that's listed there, I've seen in that kind of optical character recognition format as a the two is a Z instead of the two. So, um, but you know, this has existed. I, I mean, it, it's it was publicized out there. Whether mouse usage, usage was um, becoming more common in 1989 and 1990 uh, for people to start catching um, what it meant or seeing the humor. Now, the, the part numbers there are actually authentic, and you will find them in IBM technical manuals. And it's true that you could go through and you could order those specific part numbers and you could get the replacement units um, accordingly. You could get, it's actually the mouse ball and the clip, the retaining clip, the plastic retaining clip. And we'll look at examples of those. Um, but, and those are evident. Um, I've seen that exist online with the IBM value point series that was in later on in like 92, uh, 93, 94, 95 was kind of the heyday there for the value point series. Uh, I've seen a technical reference that, that talked about um, those FRUs of the same FRUs and the value point series did actually um, use the mice that were initially released with the um, the PS2s, and they just, as IBM is is common to do, they, um, you know, they they found out that they could use those, or they wanted to use probably a lot of the spares uh, from the PS2 series that they had around with the current PC lineup that they were selling of systems, and of course the value points are. Among um, IBM aficionados, I mean, they're known as a little bit more cheaper, um, kind of a little bit more conforming to like the 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 competition that was out there uh, at the time, and so they were cheapened a little bit, um, you know, less money to produce, different, a little bit different from the PS2s that were a little bit more of the high dollar uh, computer, and um, they just, that's how IBM sales resulted. Now, IBM did have some later mice to these, and I've even got my, uh, the camcorder, I can go through and zoom in at appropriate point here. And, uh, but these are the, the mice that came out initially with the PS2. And in fact, I'll go through and let's see. Okay, yeah, that's probably a pretty good view of the, the camcorder for doing what I need. And I have the, the ability to see the, the, the picture for that. So, and I've heard these called finger mice. Um, I don't know if that's just for the longer pieces there of the buttons. Um, I've heard them called wedge mice or trapezoid on how that uh, is more almost like a, a, a triangle or a, with rounded corners for the the shape of these. And as I say, IBM did have later mice, and I can probably go over those at a, at a point um, as well to show 
how they improved and were more necessarily ergonomic, um, as that became a term later on to, to fit. Um, there are people that, I mean, they have a little bit of a preference. I've even seen where um, people have gone through and um, upgrade these and made them USB and actually put that uh, sensor on the bottom. Now, this or these, and, and you'll see a little bit of dirt and grime on the cables. And actually, understand, these are some of the uh, cleaner mice I had around. They didn't go through, and, and maybe I should follow that bulletin to go through and clean them. But initially, you can see the IBM and Boss logo. These were the, the mice that were leased with the PS2s. They had a smaller connector, PS2 style, six contacts within. And at a later point, as we'll go through, when IBM had these for the, for the value points, and so this is kind of against, I guess, the, the, where IBM had the stock of the older mice and just include them with the value point series. But it does have a bigger plug once it got to the mice that were included with the value point series. So on the underside of these, and I even have a, you know, a mouse ball off to the side here, spare, spare ball. Um, that I can show as well. So this is probably the most common um, mouse type among what I have, or that it is from. Yeah, we can go through. We'll zoom. Okay from Japan, and that does have the marking there as far as, um, you know, what the part number FRU is of this. And uh, it's got the FCC ID on there. And this would be, for the Japan, would be the so-called pop-off method. And so it's where you easily just slide that down, that plastic piece, and that and that's part of the of the FRU as well to be included with the ball because I mean these would get lost as well. But it just that's the bottom surface. In fact, you can even see. Oh, that's just a. Huh. I don't think that's an underwriter laboratories, but that might just be a batch code. Even there, the 24th week of, I guess it's a three. I was thinking that was an, an 80. I was thinking that was 86 for a while. I was thinking that that would signify a, a date code. Of course, that would be right before the PS2 or announced if, if, if it had an 86 date. But that, that retained cover comes off fairly easily. Inside, there is the mouse ball. And this one, you know, needs to be clean. The one I have over here is spare. It looks, it looks a little bit cleaner. But and you took these and, and just wiped them down with typically with alcohol, uh, denatured alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. But these are the steel balls, or so-called steel balls. Uh, this is what they're referring to, that some balls are heavier than others. And I'll bring up Peter's comment later on too. Uh, he apparently didn't see that same for being an, an IBM field engineer himself in Germany. Um, he didn't see the notification for that apparently uh, until it was uh, shown to him in 2005 on the SIF news group. So that's also a little bit of the authentic nature. That was just a, maybe a little bit of humor that existed on the um, U.S. side 
and wasn't translated into other languages uh, by that same jokester. Um, but you you went through and you you um, had a, a paper towel or a, a rag and went through and cleaned that with the denatured the alcohol. There were also these rollers in here. And like I say, the youth of today, they don't know the struggle. And typically these would put, and it's more evident on the bottom one here, they put a band of grime. And this is supposed to be a smooth surface. And so you'd get out cotton swabs. And a lot of time you even had to go through and scrape these, I mean, this is being metal, uh, would not be um, as concerning to damage it or anything like that um, by like a, a pocket knife edge or something else to go through and just clean that, that grime off of there on those rollers because it was where the mouse, you know, these were the two axes of the, of the mouse that has this ball pressed against the the surface that it, it rolled across, then that would transfer that to the rollers that were the side, you know, for the, for your X and Y axis or horizontal and uh, uh, relatively horizontal and vertical axis, uh, um, axis on the screen, so to speak, of how that movement, you're moving the mouse and how that's represented on the screen in front of you in a graphical environment with the mouse pointer. But these, this with the, with the steel ball um, goes through and, I mean, it's definitely got some, some heft to it too. That, that ball and that steel ball, um, and Peter went made the comment, you know, that some on that, some balls are, made of steel or heavier, that this arrangement worked very well. And we'll, I'll show that as a contrast um, to the other mice of that type. Let me put that off to the side. So this one is made in Ireland. And it's the same release, same mouse balls. This is ultimately the same as that Japanese made version. This mouse ball is even uh, pretty dirty for all that. And it transfer, it'd pick up all the stuff on the surface that it rolled on, and then it would transfer those to the rollers. And you can see that, that banding again, man, then these things are pretty filthy as it is that I, I need to go through and just clean them myself and wipe over the top of them. And from what I've seen too, with this this so-called clip-on method, they have these are kind of like a, a a Teflon or a slick pad, and that's so the the mouse would actually slide on the surface, and really, other than that, that ball would be what would contact your your surface and and roll with that, and you could have you know you you wanted high quality. Um, mouse pads and things like that, um, you know, those could wear, you could have a surface that really just didn't work to, um, to transfer that mo that movement as well. And that's where your mouse pads came in to play. So that's that Ir the Irish version or from Ireland and with the big plug, like the value point and I've heard, or Peter went went stated that the Irish mall that made in it was like a made in U.S. slash Ireland. Um, although in all these mice, I have not found one that is marked as being made in the United States. So here we have another dirty, dirty one. <laughs> these things, the cords and everything else. I, I should have spent the time prepping for the video. I'm sorry um, to go through. That's another um, Japanese small, apparently I think I had that one out as a as the, uh, the contrast for the, the difference in the plugs between the, the PS2 and the value point. 
um, just that size and what IBM did to get this a little bit more apparently, you know, as as a better graph to to plug it in. And of course, it this is kind of rounded. You do have the embossment of the IBM to denote that that was up when it was plugged into the system. It's got the um, the kind of the keyway for that connector, so you don't put it in wrong or the or the little knots that fit in. Um, but this is with that flat top was a little bit easier to tell uh, this way is up for those. And again, still with the Japan still, and that looks to be extremely dirty ball. Maybe that's why I had it out as an example. Yick. And again, within there, that that banding and that's how nasty these things got and when it got to be that nasty in particular on the rollers not so much on the the mouse ball itself and that feels even a little bit tacky like uh kind of like a smoker's office i don't know if that's uh, uh just that tar from a smoker or anything like that looks about the same color and um but when you got this level of dirt to it it just it didn't operate at all so these would need to be cleaned before they're in common usage now lastly we have and it's all the same look otherwise uh, exterior uh, when you go on the un the underside this is the made in taiwan example same model number and everything else and it's this is the so-called twist off method and i even have this um it's where these notches actually would be in the full um nine degree and 270 positions as it relates to the orientation of the mouse i had this um these this one slightly spaced because going through and twisting these off and this is something that i mean this is the mouse that i pulled out as an example because i was able to get the the retaining clip off of it the other ones were just they were so hard um to to move that you know that's the reason i pulled that one out and i've seen on these the uh those teflon pads the little sliders and these don't feel as slick as the other models despite all the dirtiness and everything else these seem to yellow a little bit more or that seems to be their a little bit of their kind of their natural color and they don't seem as slick as the uh the mice from the other countries and of course, you notice the difference, the primary difference between um, for that being made in Taiwan, and we'll look down in the center of that, is that the, the ball is a, a black and it doesn't have as much heft. That core of metal on the inside is just not quite the same. And you can tell even between the mice, I, I mean, the steel ball, and even for the size difference, it's very evident there. Um, you can tell the difference between the heft and this steel, this, this, the one that's gray and has this rubberized, rubberized surface is a lot more hefty. There's a lot more weight, probably double or three times or more. I should have a scale and go through and weigh these things um, to see what the difference is. And you can see kind of the porousness of that. I don't know if this is like a plastic. And this doesn't have the same, there's a little bit of, um, of where you, you move your finger and everything else. And it, I mean, it does, you can, it, it does go through and it would roll, but it just, there's not the, the same weight to it at all. There's not the same um, reaction as that larger ball. And inside, we can see the same 
uh, sort of rollers and this is actually and there's a spring loading to these that they're the plastic narrow narrow wheel and I don't know if in this instance if those uh, stay I mean these look a little bit cleaner in there and then to have the one I guess it is still on those the X and Y axis there horizontal and vertical on the screen and then this is more of the tensioner yeah that's spring loaded to go through and uh, to press that lighter much lighter ball mouse ball against the uh, surfaces of those smaller rollers and I think really for all it is that this made in Taiwan just with those differences of the of the mouse ball and the uh, that this is the less des desirable uh, model I'm go through and I'm going to zoom out a little bit here or zoom out to regular but that's the the Taiwanese models are the only ones that have those black smaller less weight to the uh, to the mouse just that construction uh, being different from the the made in Ireland the made in Japan um, versions that um, that seem to be even a little bit more common than this too and this does have the the big plug for the value point series once again um, so but these were released also for the the ps2s from the from the taiwan side and i mean I've, I've heard of people over the years they prefer the the larger steel ball as a model now in addition to that i've got this and it's not necessarily a the box is not in a in uh the best shape or anything like that it's got even uh, number one. I don't know if that's, you know, like a lot number or something else. Um, and then it's even marked externally, made in Japan. So you saw these boxed up on the shelf. You knew to grab the one that was made in Japan versus the one that was made in Taiwan. Personal system to mouse. And, I mean, that marking is important, too. It's marking that as being for the, for the PS2. A little bit dusty on top there and I mean it's got brakes it doesn't have the cellophane of course or anything like that but inside and I I don't know when I when I picked this up um, anything like that I don't know if that end came out easier or this end would come out easier just some of the markings and inside we have this and this is still a shrink wrap manual and it's um interesting I, I i need to probably open and even scan this at some point of the um ibm personal system 2 mouse installation and cleaning instructions and it does even by the the bulge here and everything I mean, it includes a diskette in there. And I think it, that's probably a 720 KB format diskette that's in there. Uh, just because you could have these mice for the MAL 30, MAL 25, that they had to be able to, um, you had to be able to run the diskette on that. And this option consists of mouse and IBM Personal 2 mouse program diskette. These are probably archived, the, dis, the diskette's probably archived, but this is a little bit different format that this, you know, I mean, you got the big box of the PS2 in there and you had accessories that just like this that were included. But, um, you know, this box being separate. And uh, we can even see for the. Yeah, Mark said is 1987 and 1989. All rights reserved blank on the other side. And the styrofoam, we have 
this face up even Scott it, it even has a silica pack I mean I haven't gone through this is this is even sealed I haven't gone through and opened this before so this is this is factory fresh and of course this mouse would be unused that's the new in box portion of it and it does have that nice you know since it's made in Japan the so-called pop-off easier pop-off way to get that mouse bowl out and then the larger steel uh, or gray rubber over that steel surface and of course the silica pack is absorbing all the would-be moisture and everything else in there do not eat you know you don't want to eat those silica um, and then you know this cord came in that standardized length and I'm trying to think of that's like a six foot cord or anything else like that but just a little bit special for all that um, even if I go through and open the, the manual and uh, post the contents maybe we can do a, a video for that once I've scanned and imaged that diskette just as a way to have it um, I, I probably am going to read I've got enough dirty mice uh, that I can use as originals uh, for my ps2s so that we can just leave this all still bagged up even if I, I get into the manual here because I um, the only reason I do this otherwise is if, if somebody else has it scanned and the diskette image and everything else uh, I mean I can do that so much better these days with the uh, tools that I have but that would be the only reason I wouldn't open that pack and of course I am not going to open that today but I'll go through and um, I'll also show the and I'll provide a link to this for the um, let's go through and I'll show let me pause because I've got to go through and change my browser capture source and this is Peter Wentz page on the the it just has his mice and I'll, I'll include that link in the in the video description and he goes over not necessarily the uh, just limited to the um, to the IBM mice but he lists a uh, Microsoft serial mouse even the one with the DB 25 the larger connector serial mouse there's the later Microsoft mouse with the DB 9 connector smaller connector and he, he even lists as far as um, if it's um, PS2 combat compatible in other words you put the little adapter plug on the end of that to adapt it to a PS2 style connection a passive uh, connection on whether that would that would work in that instance but he gets down to IBM first PS2 mouse and here he call you know he lists the PS2 introduction date 1987 uh, the trapezoid style introduced with the PS2 machines back in 1987 lists the the uh, model and part numbers two medium gray buttons IBM engraved on the top at the top front cable with slim connector and again that's got that smaller plug is what he means there and he goes through to this you know that's the some have bigger balls that's the um, all the other countries of manufacture having that that better bigger steel ball uh, than the Taiwanese version that the ball was smaller and less weight to it and uh, there are however variants existing left side the US Ireland made mouse retainer with arrow pointing towards front large gray mouse ball that we went over and saw that directly oh okay he he means the image that he has there the on the left side is the the US Ireland made version and that's 
you know, the Japanese version as well. He didn't have Japan in there. And as I said earlier, I have not found a mouse that listed being manufactured in the United States. And um, it's all Japan, um, Ireland, or Taiwan is the country of origins is what I see there. Um, the right side is the Taiwanese version or Taiwan version as you list here. Two arrows on the retainer showing the unlocked direction of how you have to twist that. And as I say, a lot of the mice I have, that is just so tight in this case to undo that retaining clip. Um, smaller and lighter black mouse ball and the mouse is just so much lighter. You can, I could go through and I could pick these up side by side one in one hand, one in the other, and I could th tell the difference of that the Japan and Ireland manufacturer version just for it being heavier. Um, and that's all in the mouse ball, apparently. I mean, just the shells. I could do that. I could go through and I could uh, weigh the shells uh, without the mouse ball and retaining clip in there. And the retaining clips probably weigh about the same that plastic piece it's about the same mass or size uh, between both versions but that the mouse ball is all the difference in the world and just that heavier weight makes it makes the mouse operate better although I have of course in modern age I have a strong preference for using optical mice um, with the lasers it just it's so much of a, a benefit and if you have to fool just any use on these things over time, um, you'll go through and have a preference as well. And most laser mice, optical mice, are are a USB connection, but there are, are PS2 versions that are out there and adapters that uh, can work with some mice out there. Not all, but some. And um, this mouse, in addition to the plug with the bigger outer case, as it came for the PS slash value point series, and that he talks about that plug being larger for the when it came out with the value point series. And um, so that's what Peter has listed for all of this. Um, we can get into I've got variants and these have their own versions as well as far as what he calls the fat mouse I've heard these as the uh, the soap bar there's a um, sometimes the, they're similar mice from Microsoft they're um, considered the soap bar or the this is shape that they have but this is actually more in the shape of the soap bar and the uh, the buttons and underside of this can differ and there's uh, even DPI variations and stuff like that that, um, that Peter may cover in the link and you can, yeah, he shows the difference in coloring. I don't think he goes over the uh, necessarily the DPI difference or dots per inch and how much resolution that mouse has or how it tracks when you move it as well. Um, and then even has some of the later IBM mice and that classic, uh, you know, the Blues Brother background to the mouse pad it's on, um, kind of that MCA mafia sort of thing that uh, Peter, um, that was the thing on the uh, news group. But that is the so-called finger or trapezoid mice of that announcement. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this content. Um, certainly comment on it if you have more information as far as what you feel and how authentic um, that announcement was for all that. Um, you know, leave a comment. And um, I think that there's a little bit of artistic license in how it's worded and just seems that it just... In some areas, it just seems it's a little bit off. I think whoever wrote it is having fun, of course, with how they're writing it up. But it still probably was an official bulletin to some form to uh, 
um, how you could order those parts and how you to to clean um, the mice and it it wasn't very detailed as far as cleaning the rollers. They just talked about cleaning the mice, you know, the, the mouse ball, things like that. They're not talking about uh, necessarily the roller or anything like that, but oh well. So just more of that odd content for the channel. If you're not subscribed, click on that subscribe button and recommend it to your friends as well for them to subscribe to get more subscribers to my channel, please. But that is all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.